Quotations are the real words of your sources that give your story personality. But be careful because sometimes people lie, just straight up don't tell the truth. Other times it's more innocent, like an exaggeration or fudging of a fact. Either way, verify direct quotes just as you would any other fact in your story. You also want to remember that people yammer and stammer and ramble on and on. You don't want to use a quote so long-winded that your audience loses interest. There are a few different ways to use quotes in your story. The first is the direct quote. This is exactly what the speaker said, the entire sentence that presents an idea in a relevant and concise way. Then there's the partial quote, which you use when the original quote is too long or awkward. Be careful not to use fragmentary quotes in which you're just highlighting a specific word as they can look odd and break up the flow for the reader. Paraphrasing is a way to use what the quote said, but not in those exact words. You use a paraphrase to rephrase a source's idea in a clear and concise way. It can also be called an indirect quote. It's what the source said, just not exactly how it was said. Finally, you can include dialogue in your stories. This captures the conversation between two or more people. When using quotations in a story, be sure to avoid these problems. Dull, obvious quotes. This is one of the reasons not to run a news release word for word as they are typically full of, I'm very pleased with the launch of our new product, and other boring quotes. Don't rehash the quote. Now, the book gives us this example. Ivan Oder boasts that he never uses deodorant. Quote, I never use deodorant, end quote, he says. You've just said the same thing twice. Say it, or let your source say it, but you only need to say it once. Now you've already learned not to use quotes as the lead to your story. Now remember that you can't read minds. If you can, then go be a detective and not a journalist. Don't say someone dreams of something or hopes for something unless the person told you so and you can back it up with a quotation. Don't create monologues. Sometimes your source will be so fascinating that they'll want to turn the story into a question and answer piece. If so, then go for it. Otherwise, try to keep a quote from a single person to no more than two paragraphs. Don't mimic someone's dialect. It's insulting and possibly racist. Just because someone doesn't speak exactly the way you do doesn't mean that you get to mock them in print for it. Don't repeat foul language. Each publication has its own standard. In this class, assume if you wouldn't say it to my grandmother, then you shouldn't include it in your story. A swearing source is a good way to practice partial quotes and paraphrasing. And never, ever distort a quote's meaning. In 1998, Jeffrey Figer, perhaps best known as being the lawyer for assisted suicide Dr. Jack Kevorkian, ran unsuccessfully for governor of Michigan. During his campaign, many news outlets reported that Figer had said, quote, Jesus was a goofball. But a tape made by the reporter, Richard Leiby, shows that while speculating on how religious beliefs emerge, Figer compared the belief that Jesus is divine to the cult of Elvis Presley. What he actually said was, quote, in 2000 years, we've probably made someone who is the equivalent of Elvis into God. So I see no reason why not to believe that in 2000 years, Elvis will be God. Probably if we went back 2000 years and they said, you know, we think Jesus is God and Jesus is just some goofball that got nailed to a cross, end quote. Just taking out the part at the end is a malicious distortion of Figer's words. So what do quotes look like in a story? 
use double quotation marks at the beginning and end of the quotation. Now, if you're quoting someone who is quoting someone else, use single quotation marks for the quoted statement inside the other quoted statement. Periods and commas always go inside quotation marks. Colons, semicolons, and dashes always go outside quotation marks. And if you're quoting someone's question, the question mark goes inside the quotation mark. But if you're asking a question about quoted material, the question mark goes outside the quotation marks. Use ellipses to indicate that you have deleted any part of a quote. Use parentheses to supply missing words, such as if the quote said he and you want to clarify with the person's name. Parentheses clarify what the speaker meant, but show that isn't exactly what was said. Finally, you want to capitalize the first word of a direct quote, but there's no need to capitalize partial quotes. Please refer to your textbook for examples of each of these.